This is one of my favorite questions to ask. Why aren't you selling more? And I love this, but you, you know, if you ask this, I'm sure that you would know the answers as well as I do. This is like going into McDonald's, right? You, you, there's no surprises. Gosh, you know what? If I had cheaper prices, I could sell more. Hey, you know, nobody returns my call. I leave voicemail messages. No one returns calls these days. I have no idea who to call on, and on and on and on, and it's never my fault. It's not me. It's not me. If I had better marketing. Are these, does this sound familiar to you? It should. In my opinion, however, you're not selling more for different reasons. So I've brought five questions with me. Question number one, are you making a high value sales call? Now you heard me just say, stop selling printing. So a high value sales call is one that doesn't sound like this. Hi, my name is Bill. I'd like to know if you can put me in touch with the person who buys the print. Now I started selling in 1982. I was 21 years old. I told you I worked for UARCO. This worked, but this leads to the price objection. And this is one of the comments that I hear a lot. They say, you know, uh, everybody buys on price. They buy on price because you led them there. That's like saying, well, you know what? I went for a walk one night. I went down a dark alley, got mugged. <laughs> if this is happening to you, you're getting mugged because you're leading the client down the dark alley. Question number two, are you calling on the right target market? You heard me say, I'm 55 years old. When I was 25 years old, I had a totally different target market. Do you have a prospecting process? 90% said no. Nine out of 10 salespeople said, no, I do not have a process. Blows my mind, but I get it. Because here's what happens. I promise you, today is the fifth? Today's the fifth. OK, so you're starting off the month. You think to yourself, man, I had a really bad July. I had a really tough July. And I have to go out there, and I got to kill it. So I'm going to go out, and I'm going to make a whole bunch of sales calls. So you do. You make a ton of calls. And you come back to the office, and you say, wow, look, look at all these business cards I got, boss. This is awesome. I'm going to call. I'm going to follow up on all these. And so you put them down on your desk, and then the phone rings. And then you come back to your desk later on, you put something on top of it. And then a week and a half later, you take whatever you put on top of it, off of it, and there's all those cards. And you say, oh, nuts, I'm supposed to call these people. I can't call them now, I look stupid. So what do we do with the cards? Throw them away. Throw them away and do the exact same thing next month. The secret is the application, the diligence. Diligence is the most important thing Period. You know, I, 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 quality of the call, terrific. Diligence, man, just keep making the calls. Because you can be a lousy sales rep, but if you keep making those calls and keep making those calls and you've got pleasant persistency, big smile on your face as you're calling. Hey, it's Bill Farquharson calling. Yes, I have called three or four times. But let me ask you something. How many people call you three times? Can you imagine how hard I'm going to work for you when you become a client of mine? Wow, that's a great voicemail message. Here's the promise that I'm going to make you. If you make a high quality call to the right target market, using an effective prospecting process, applying that process with diligence and pleasant persistency, if you do all those things, you will succeed 100% of the time. These are the questions that you need to return to on a regular basis. So ask yourself, am I making a high quality call? No one's returning my voicemail message. OK, what can I control? I can control what I'm saying. So maybe I'm not saying something of value. I can learn about that skill that Bill was talking about, of researching a company, of looking at their website. When I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, we do this a lot. We get online together. I say, OK, here's what I see, here's what I see, here's what I see. And the nice thing about it is when you learn how to call on one bank, you got that whole vertical lined up. Do I have the right prospect? What kind of companies am I calling on? I might be making a great call on the wrong person. So let me, let me just kind of review that. And then within that company, am I calling on the right departments? Do I have a process? Should I be changing that process? Change it up. Try it for a month. See what kind of success you have. Try it for six weeks, whatever. And then change it up and see if that works. Maybe you're not, you shouldn't be sending an introductory email. You should be sending an introductory letter. Or maybe a postcard. Why? Because postcards have a 100% readership. You pick them up, you flip them over. Try something handwritten. Nobody handwrites anymore. Awesome. Give it a shot. Am I working hard enough? Am I working hard enough? Now, if I had to pick two out of these, I'd say number one and number four are the reasons why you or your sales reps are not selling enough. 
You're making a lousy sales call and you're not working hard enough. This is not, over, this is not complicated. Don't overthink it. Make a high quality call on the right target market within a process and make the calls, make the calls, make the calls. And that's how you grow your sales. Thank you, have a great show. Great to see you all again.